These are five more patterns that every UI, UX, and product designer should know about and be using in their work. All right, our very first pattern of the day is gonna be the modal. Modals are boxes. You might've heard them called dialogue boxes, but commonly they're referred to as modals and they're a great place to store extra information that's not on Canvas. It's not in view at all times. This could be when the user taps on something and it opens up some information or clicks a button to start a new action or user flow. And we can actually insert a lot of those actions inside of modals. Here you see a payment method modal that's popped open. So the user maybe taps here. And instead of being led out to an entire new page or page refresh, they just get to input the credit card information right here. Here's another example of a modal, this one being a little bit more informational or onboarding modal, we might call this one. This allows the user to get the information they need for a short or limited amount of time, click through, put it away, and then never have to see it again. That is the mode. Next up, we're gonna be taking a look at the checkbox. I know it sounds elementary, but checkboxes are in everything. Checkboxes are usually a way for users to select multiple selections inside a list of selections. And so you can see here, we have examples of a user uh, selecting what they would like to kind of like fill out in this form. We wanna allow the user a way or an action to actually select multiple things. So maybe you're filling out a contact list and you wanna select multiple. Maybe you're clearing your email inbox and you want to select multiple emails at a time to do some bulk actions. You'll find these commonly on mobile and web interactions. They are a staple of just basic UI design. Now checkboxes are very, very different than some other small micro patterns that we have. And one of those might be the difference between a checkbox, a toggle, which we've already talked about in this video and previous videos, but then the radio button. You can see that the radio button is one or the other. A radio button is a way to designate, I want this or that, whereas toggles and checkboxes can be all turned on or all turned off. So the next thing we'll be talking about is the radio button. Here you can see another great example of a radio button where we're actually not only using the radio button, but actually inserting them in a larger user interface element. So these cards that are kind of actually acting like toggles, they're turning on or off. Do you want this or that? All right, next up, we're gonna be talking about the toast notification or the toast banner. This is a type of notification that actually derives its name from toast popping up from a toaster. So commonly you will see these little banners or these notifications pop down from the top of your mobile device or maybe sitting at the top of your web application. They'll pop down for a limited amount of time. Maybe you successfully completed an action. Uh, maybe you had an error and they need to notify you about that, but they don't need it sitting on screen at all times. You can simply pop up or down a toast notification banner showing the user that there's something going on. Here's another example of that mobile pattern. Something's happened, yikes, there's a problem connecting, boom. We pull that toast notification banner down and then we're gonna tuck it away. Usually these toast notification banners have a way to X out or on mobile you can actually swipe to get rid of them or, and almost always they are timed. So after a certain amount of time, they will move themselves off canvas. All right, and the last pattern for the day is gonna be the good old fashioned sidebar. That's right, sidebars have been around since the dawn of time. Not really, but they are very, very effective. They are just a way for you to create some fixed navigation, global navigation, a place that users can always go back to, um, to reference large global or high level navigational items. Having some sort of fixed sidebar either on the left or right can be very, very helpful depending on the information that you're looking at. Most of the time you'll find them in global left-hand sidebars, but sometimes you'll find them on the right-hand side in these sort of contextual fixed sidebars that have to do with the content currently in situation or currently in view that the user is dealing with. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and user patterns just like this one. So make sure you hit that thumbs up, that little bell notification, you stick around for another one. I hope that you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. Hope you're making amazing things. And I hope you're using these tried and true patterns in your design work.